Hello friends, you're with the Lonesome Gamer and I'm playing Rome Incorporated. <clears throat> now we're in turn seven and I'm in a pretty good shape. I am, oops, I'm sitting on right now 200, well about 300 bucks, close to 300 bucks and that's without the taxes of obviously I mean we got the taxes now and there's also not too much trouble in here we have the Moorish war down here which might come to Europe but it's not that likely I mean uh, these allies might as well keep him here we don't know that yet and apart from that I think there is actually no other wars. A couple of leaders are waiting over here. Zimeon. Um, I don't know. We got, yeah, Arminius right there. I think this is it. And a few provinces where we have a little bit of trouble. We we got to be careful here, obviously, here on the border to, to the Macomanic or here the Illyrians. This is always a little risky there. Um, in Britain, down here we have an insurgent province, also here in Syria. So we also want to go there. But I'm pretty sure there is that everything's under control and honestly, it... it, it seems like this can be a solid victory but we'll find out first um, we got to check for the events and Augustus is still alive which is a I think it is kind of unusual I mean he's there since the start of the game but he's still our uh, our Emperor so let's see how many events we're gonna see okay that is the maximum six events and I think these this is actually the maximum number possible there are also only six um, markers so um, there's there will be no extra event for example because of auto and that one already is also an event here so only five more events will happen okay so this will be hard we have um, we have an assassin and we have a doubled conspiracy so I wrote twice the same event that means this gets uh, is flipped and is doubled and that means we got a plus two to the assassination uh, that is going to be dangerous for Augustus uh, we also have a plague again for the third turn in a row so that means we again have to um, demote units and that will also increase the unrest and we also have here an increase of unrest because we have a usurper so that uh, might be an ugly turn um, so let's see first the uh, the assassination uh, that is dangerous now so first let's check Caesar's intrigue ability and the prefect's intrigue ability. That brings us to six. Each emperor's counter in the emperor's box is a seven. Conspiracy is doubled is a nine. And we have one Imperial, uh, Praetorian guard in play. So that brings us to eight, okay? So we have a, a, a modifier of 8, we're going to roll a d6 and if we roll 12 or higher, Caesar is killed. So uh, yeah, let's, let's see. That is a 1, so he survives that thing. Um,
the prefect is killed and assassin if he assassinates Caesar and is not made Caesar. Hmm. So is he killed? Possibly. Hmm. That is a little weird. Maybe that was something that I actually missed before. That would be bad. Let's see. No, actually, only if he is... If he kills Caesar and is not made Caesar himself, then the prefect will be killed. But that is not the case. So, uh, well, there was no success and so I guess everything stays as it was. We were lucky here because I like Augustus as a as an as the emperor, as the Caesar. And uh, yeah, I guess we were lucky that the conspiracy failed. It was a close call. And actually we got to do that a second time. Because the first time we did it because of the assassination. Because yeah, but but the second time we're going to have to do it because of the Julian emperors that are here in the box. So, we got to do a second roll, but first we got to do um we got to do mortality checks and, and the other things here. So I'm going to do the plague, for example, first, increase unrest and all that stuff. So we demoted three units and then we get seven additional unrest because of the plague. And we got a roll for the usurper event, increase unrest by 1d6. Oh, that's only a one, so we're lucky here. So it's at 11, and then we're going to do the mortality checks. And we start with my guys here, Augustus starts again. If we roll a 6, people die. Okay, he's fine. Second guy, the consul, Vespasian, the prefect, holy moly, he dies. That makes life a little easier for Augustus, the chances rise that he might survive um, the, uh, the assassination attempt. But, on the other hand, uh, Vespasian was a good guy, so it kind of sucks that we lost him. Next. Oh man, Zeyanus, our leader in Gallia, died. Close. Otto. No. Okay, so we lost two good guys. That's a shame. And now we got to roll for the other leaders. So we roll for Arminius. Okay, he's fine. We roll for Zimeon. And he's also fine. Is that it? Oh no, there's another guy here. Bato. Oh! Bato died. That is good. Okay, neat. Um, great, that makes life a little easier for me. Um, and now we go to the assassination because the Julian Emperors are in play. I'm not totally sure, but I think on a 1 to 4 I survive. So let's roll the die. And I'm pretty sure we're good here. Um, it's still because of the conspiracy. There's still a plus two modifier, but because now the intrigue ability is one less, so we got a five, six, eight, minus one is a seven, so this only is a ten, and a 12 would have been the death of Augustus. But that is not the case, which I'm glad for. Okay, great, so we go into the taxation now. Okay, so even though we were not super lucky, 
We didn't manage to double Italy, which is always painful, simply because we lost our prefect here. And uh, also Gallia wasn't doubled, also because we lost the guy here. I think they, with their help, with their administration abilities, which were quite good, I think, maybe we could have done it. I think definitely Italia, that was just by one. Uh, but apart from that, it was okay, and we're sitting now on 511 bucks, which is obviously a ridiculous amount of money. Um, we gotta pay, uh, we gotta pay 88 bucks. And then we will move the war. So let's see if it will move at all. That's a four. I doubt it, honestly. Uh, the pillage says... No, no, no. The moor is not moving. It stays where it is in Mauritania. Um, then we draw, again, 1d3 random counters plus one. Okay, that is three new wars. Let's take this one and that one, and I guess this one up here. So we have, oh boy, that one is tough. Another German war, and we can be, no, we're not lucky. Armenius is still in play, and this is brutal. This war with Armenius has a strength of 19. I mean, that is insane. Then we have uh, Karatakus. Okay, that is. I don't know where that guy is. I wonder where he, where he's from. Is he British? Yeah, it looks like he is actually British. Okay, so he sits here. And oh God, there's a British war coming up. But that's not good. So that has a strength of nine with the leader. So yeah, I mean, that is a little bit tricky now. But okay. Um, uh, yeah, fine. Uh, it's, well, we'll find out what happens here. I guess we can... I wonder if I can fight both wars, actually. So, we have the Germans, they moved through Germania Magna, they had a strong pillage roll and they moved further in here, Germania Superior, and I think that is not terribly clever, because they're totally isolated here, and there are one, two, three, four allies uh, adjacent. <laughs> so I really don't think they have a chance there. And yeah, this war here, I mean, it's not that strong anyways. It's a nine with the leader, but, and they got some, yeah, they got some, some backup basically <laughs> here. So it's not going to be that easy, but I hope I can actually fight. Um, I have a veteran ally connected and I think every connection counts, also that one. So I hope I can fight both wars and maybe destroy them. Okay, by the way, I just read that the counter of Tiberius, this one, should actually be a Illyrian counter instead of a Pannonian one. I think we took advantage of that, but not. it wasn't that significant. So, yeah, okay. Um, oh, and I realized that we also have to pay one more, I guess. So, I always paid 
one buck less <laughs> because I calculated from the start and just reading these helps sometimes so uh, you know what I'm gonna spend another seven bucks I, because we are on the seventh turn I paid for seven turns one less so but that is not a big deal okay um, Anything else going on here? I don't know, I hope so. The fleet in the province. No, I guess the rest is pretty clear. So the unrest is at 20 right now because of the wars, the fleets, the grain, all that stuff. That is significant. But on the other hand, I'm optimistic that we can bring this down again. Let's see what new statesmen come into play. Just one, that's not good at all. Okay, this is Claudius. Mm. Okay, well, he's not that great. He's not a good military leader, but he's good in other things. Uh, let's see how we want to appoint now our leaders. Uh, I definitely want to fight these two wars here, the British and the Germans. I think I will ignore the Moorish war down here. Okay, so Caligula remains consul. I made Paulinus my commander in Britain. He's got a military rating of four. And... Silvanus is the commander in Gallia, also with a military rating of 4. Otto is still trying to get some money out of Mösia. The same is the job of Claudius. He's got a good administration rating, so I'm going to send him there to Hispania, because this is a rich province. And Tiberius stays in Syria, uh, hoping to get the insurrection down here and uh, yeah I guess that could be helpful I wonder mm. the thing is I'm definitely lacking of, of strong military personnel here I mean these two guys are busy fighting the war do I want to bring a better guy to Egypt Maybe I should, I mean, in Gallia we already have a generic leader with a rating of 3, which is pretty good. So, maybe it's actually not necessary to have Silvanus there. Uh, you know what, I think I'm going to send him to Egypt instead. Maybe I get this province, Thebais. Uh, maybe I get the insurgency under control there with him in command okay uh, so we did all the tracks thing here prestige and uh, what was that uh, the the the, the uh, unrest and I paid 70 bucks so the unrest for the for the bread and and, and circuses so the unrest is now down to five which i think is a good um a good number and now we're gonna place our units and i get a feeling that that massive uh yeah that that this this whole mass of troops will probably move here uh, into gallia again and we got the money to do that. That's the cool part, right? It, it's expensive to transfer all these guys, but we got the money. So the revolts were fine. Basically, there, there were simply none. Um, it was a little close in these where the war was. Could have led to an insurgency because of their leaders. Their pillageability is also added. But it didn't happen. Lots of troops in both of those. Uh, here was really close though, but it was fine in the end um, and I managed 
placed enough troops here to make this an automatic success in Thebais. So this is now my loyal province. And the same here. I was a little lucky here in Syria. But that is also now a loyal Roman province. And no problems here. I didn't check this one though. I don't think it's really endangered, but you never know. No, a four is going to be fine. I mean, there's a war adjacent, but I think that was even impossible. Okay, so yeah, everything else is good. And that means we're going to see now the wars. And this is, this is not that easy this time. Uh, I want to fight both of them. And yeah, they are both fairly dangerous. Uh, so the idea was, hmm, yeah, what was the idea? I think I wanted to attack this war. Okay, this has a strength of 19, but there are these allies adjacent here. Two, three, five, Uh, six. Okay. Um, so actually, you know, I'm not absolutely... I should check this one with a war adjacent. There might be a little risk. No, that is definitely not becoming barbarian. I'm pretty sure that one... No, that one won't either. Okay, great. So let's do it again. Um, so we got a, a two, a three, a five, a six. So we subtract that from the uh, from the 19 so it goes down to 13 then let's see what we have here we got here four five okay there are five units in there and then yeah five units in here and now I was thinking about, so that was 14, right? Now if we subtract the five, we're at nine. Okay, let's see what we got here. This is 10, 11. No, wait a minute, it's, it's of course it's the other way around. So it's nine. Minus six brings it to three. So we got a, still a plus three modifier at that point. Uh, another two, so it's a plus one modifier. And I need more help. I want, I think I want, holy moly, that's a lot here. Do I really want these guys or do I prefer those? You know, I think I'm gonna take these. So it's plus one modifier, another two. Four, so it's a minus six. Uh, plus the ability of the leader, it's a minus nine. Okay, I mean, that is definitely gonna be enough. Let's see if I really need all these guys. I wanna make sure I win that. So it's gonna be a minus nine. Okay, that's that's definitely a triumph and it's it's very good. It's only one loss, so that was just great. So this is is cool. This brings me also a lot of money. Sadly it's I should have thought about that. We only get 28 bucks because the administrator is not that great. Still, we get seven glory points. Unrest goes down to zero, and I take one loss, so I'm simply going to bring the unrest up one space. I can promote a unit, and I'm going to promote these guys. Okay. And now let's see the other one. That will be the harder one. And I, first I'm going to calculate before I actually decide to do the fighting. So this is tricky. This is a, 
a nine, the war that's the basic, the strength, including the leader, and the homeland gives it another two. So that means it's an 11 and the province is another one. So that's a 12. However, there are the allies here. So it goes down to a 10. Uh, okay, and now we get a count. One, that's not so impressive. Two, three, four, five. And we can use these guys. So that was a 10, and with these we are at 5, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that would make it a minus 3, and the commander has a 4. So that's a minus 7. I think I'm going to go for that. Uh, I think that looks pretty good. So let's hope for the best here. Uh, that was great. Fantastic, no problems. We have pretty high losses though, but still, that is clearly a triumph. Uh, sadly, it doesn't give us that much because the war itself has a pretty weak strength. Uh, it was just the situation and the leader and all that. But yeah, that was great. We did it. Uh, so let's, uh, let's do all the other stuff. So here's one thing that I missed, and I'm gonna do that. I have to put that fleet in here if I take these units. So that will cost me unrest, but if I fight with these units this war, which took me two fleets, uh, I cannot use that fleet to fight that war if these units fight this war, right? So I kind of missed that, but that... Uh, I think it's fair to, to change that. Okay, so I'm ready, I'm done with that. Um, civil War, well, I guess again that's extremely unlikely. Uh, let me see what about the rebellion, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that is not going to happen. Uh, so we have we're talking about a boy, that's a two, four, five. Maybe two veteran legions, something like that. Maybe a little more, actually. One, two, three, well. Four, five, holy moly. Okay, we got three, another three for the veteran legions. Two, five, six, nine, minus four, that's a five. Ah, uh, that's not gonna happen. There is no rebellion here going on. Definitely not for this guy and also not for the other one. Um, okay, so we're done. And we're gonna, uh, this goes up again, the, the turn. So we go into turn eight. So we're in turn eight, and we have four events, including the uh, conquest event. So we have an adoption, it's a plus one to the statesman box role. We have barbarians, not that great at all. And we have a usurper that increases the unrest by 1d6. So let's do that first. Holy shit, that's six so we have an unrest of eight and uh, now we can do the conquest which means we can annex a province and I think I want to do this one here hmm So let's do the mortality checks. Augustus is fine again. Caligula. 
Paulinus, and there he goes. Another really good leader dies. Otto, yeah, that that guy survives. Claudius, oh boy, that's not good. So all the good ones die. Okay, that guy survives. Tiberius, okay, at least he also survives. And do we have another Yazimion here? And he also survives. Okay. Um, assassinations. I think we don't have to do that. I guess that's going to be impossible. I'm going to do oops. I'm going to do a roll and maybe on a six check the numbers. Okay, that's definitely not a, uh, not a success. As, and then I'll go into the taxes. So we're sitting on 536. Amazingly good. Got to pay 92 for the troops. And we're going to move the wars. Uh, that's not going to move. Um, and we're going to draw additional wars. So let's see. These are two more and another one. So that means overall we got three wars. Okay, we got Baudica. A Britain leader, a British leader. Oh, a very strong Parthian war. That is very impressive back there. Holy shit! And that is... No, I thought it was another Parthian war, but it is another leader instead. It is Tactarinus. Um, and that is a Moorish leader. Okay, now things are also getting a little more serious down there. So that means we're going to move now this war. It's got a naval a rating of one, so that means it goes here first, and from there, you gotta roll a die. Okay, so the Parthian War ends up here in Cappadocia, which is actually not that bad. Well, it's not even sure if it ends up there, it probably will, but I gotta do that. Pillet roll. I'm, I'm pretty sure it. No, 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 no. It's it's gonna end up there. So that means. But we can fight it from here, from Cilicia and Pontus. So maybe it's not that bad. It's it might be a pretty good position for it. It's also kind of surrounded by three other allied or strong allies, which makes it easier for us to fight it. So in sh in uh, rest, uh, unrest is at 16, which is not that bad, considering we had that usurper event here with a 6. Um, so let's see what kind of statesman we get. That is a, a 3, we add 1 because of the adoption, but it's still just 2 new statesmen. A statesman. Okay. So we have, who is that? Nero, Nero, and he's not great at all. And the other guy is Galba. Well, he's not that bad. Uh, he's at least a, a, a solid fighter. Okay. Hmm. Now, let's see. Uh, 
yeah, I'm gonna appoint these guys and uh, let's see where we can place them. Okay, so Caligula stays consul because he's fairly popular. I mean, I could. I don't know what else to do with him. He's such a such a useless guy, basically. Um, hmm. The thing is, if I send. That make a difference? You know, at least I could, maybe I want to actually send Sylvanus. I think I want to make Sylvanus a console uh, because it helps me to gain more prestige and I'm going to send Caligula to Britannia. It It's basically the same there. I mean, it doesn't hurt me at all there. And I lose one, uh, one point to improve my unrest, but I get more prestige out of that. So I think that's fine. Um, because the combined administration ability helps to gain prestige, and there Caligula is really bad. Anyways, then, so Caligula is sitting in Britannia, where he can't do much harm. Uh, we have uh, Nero in Pannonia, trying to do a little more to get a little more money out of it. The same with Otto in Mersia. And then we have in Syria, Galba. And there he is definitely there to get more money because Syria is a rich province. And Tiberius is sitting in Pontica trying to fight that big war here, the Parthian War. And I'm gonna again, for now, ignore this one because it's gonna be very hard to fight. I can only reach it from a single space. So um, I'm not planning to, to fight that Moorish war down there, even though there is a leader. I think it's okay for me now. Okay, now I can annex a province and, hmm. Which one is that gonna be? What? I think I'm actually gonna go with this here. Mersia Superior. Make that a veteran ally. Um, so I think, again, I'm, I'm simply gonna place two allied markers here. Just like that. Okay. Um, yeah, it's kind of an important space. You got two barbarians coming in here and it kind of holds the thing together against the north. So I think having strong allies here could help. I mean, I could obviously also make, I could make a province here, maybe that's a better idea. You know what, I'm gonna leave this and instead I'm gonna start converting, for example, Rod Rodis into an insurgent province and because I got a good military rating here in Pontica right now, it shouldn't be too hard for me to make this a loyal Roman province. And it gives me a good, good additional income of three. So I think that could be a good idea too. So then we can, we have to decrease. We don't have to do that because every command has a, has at least an insurgent province. Increase prestige by the combined administration of these two guys. So it's an additional eight, which means it goes up to whatever that is. We have 174 right now. Uh, decrease unrest by the combined popularity, which is seven. So this goes down to nine. And then pay for bread and circuses. So I'm gonna pay 40 bucks here.
bring this down to a 5 again okay there we go and then we can build and transfer our units okay so there wasn't that much going on I mean obviously the borders remain kind of protected apart from uh, I have here now a couple of troops so if the Moors move over here it might be helpful to have them here so that they don't do too much havoc and even if they should I mean hmm, you know maybe I should actually transfer a couple of more guys here uh, just in case okay so and transferred some fleet back to their, their base to get less unrest and of course here we have now our legions ready to fight that war I also brought a couple of people here to get rid of the insurgency and this is pretty much it um, so uh, that's it we don't have to roll for unrest we're so good we have to do now the revolt checks and this is an automatic success here so this becomes Roman now and apart from that I don't know we might get some trouble in here let's roll a die and find out okay that is a four so I'm pretty sure we have to add the pillage ability and another three for the war so that means we got to add five which brings it then to nine and then we can subtract four because these are strong allies so it seems to me like there is no revolt going on yeah that seems that seems right um, Apart from that, we have barbarians, so we actually have to add another one, but only if they are connected to a homeland or barbarian province. Okay, so that makes things a little trickier. Um, probably have to roll for pretty much everything here. Let's see. Oh boy, that's not great. That is this one here, Germania Magna. Okay, that is a plus three, a plus five, another one, so it's a plus six. That's, a, yeah, that thing is revolting. And that one won't. This one won't either, I guess. Nope. And let's, I think you need at least three, I think these two connections are not, well, let's see. Okay, I'm not going to go through everything. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, not on camera at least. But this one is also very tricky. Let's do that quickly. Uh, three. Okay, so we got basically a plus seven here. Uh, we can subtra subtract four for the ally. So that means we're just good here. And now we're gonna, I'm gonna continue off camera. Okay, because of that barbarian event, which is probably the worst one out there, uh, things went really bad. We've lost control. I mean, we still have this, this insurgency uh, province now here in, in uh, Britannia Superior. Uh, that one, I already said that Germania Magna went down from veteran to standard ally. This one here became Barbarian, Musia Superior, which is a real shame. Uh, that one went down from Veteran to Standard Ally, which makes it in general now weaker. That one fell down, Armenia Minor. That one did because of the war. And usually that would not have happened, but um, it's the Barbarians who did that. This uh, shitty event. And this is it, and that was painful enough though. Okay, 
So that means we're now going to go to the wars and we're going to have only one, this one here. And uh, let's roll. I'm pretty sure we can win that, but it's a little stronger than I thought because these guys went from veteran ally to ally, but still we're in a, in a very good position here. So let's see what that brings us. That's a, it is a good roll, but it's a painful, painful loss. So it's not a great roll, but it's a 12 overall. And that's going to be enough. I mean, that war has a strength of 14 minus 1, 2, 4, 6. So that's a strength of 8. And then we got a lot of guys here. 1, 2, 3. I think in here we have... Oh, that we have... Eight in here, and there it's even more. I think there we got a, something like yeah, ridiculous. And uh, they are all double, so this is a 12. These are eight, so these are 20 overall. And we can subtract that from eight, so uh, and we have the leaders, uh, the leaders also good. So we're good. The bad thing is, we take a lot of losses here uh, because that's a six, but I'm getting used to it, right. Okay, this is it. We're good. Unrest is far too low to that a rebellion could be even reasonable. So that means we're fine and we're going into turn 10. And so I'm going to load this up here. We're going to see probably one more video. And yeah, I mean, it looks very, very good. Will we be able to go to, to get 200, um, 200 prestige. It's hard to say. I mean, we are nearly at 180 now. It's going to be close. We're getting about... It's not impossible. I mean, if we fight, we're going to have to fight probably three more wars. Maybe, maybe a fourth one here, but there are three more counters in there. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure actually we will because there are two turns and in each turn we're going to get about... Uh, I don't know, something like seven or eight prestige. So for that alone, we're going to get about 15. And then uh, we're going to make some more prestige out of the wars. So I think it looks pretty promising that we can actually get the 200 prestige here. Um, well, Get to find control over these and we have now insurgency province here, Cappadocia, that was allied before I annexed that twice. So now I got a chance to make that a loyal Roman province. We gotta take care of these guys here. I hope we can we can get that back somehow. That's not gonna be so easy in Britannia with all these rebels around. And of course we gotta also somehow make sure that this here will not be too painful. Maybe that's the first thing that I'm going to annex this one back here, Musia Superior. That is a dangerous situation if, if this kind of comes too close to my to Macedonia or, or Illyria. And in that point, they would be close to Italia, and that would really suck. Uh, you get a big problem once that uh, wars come to Italia because you cannot you cannot place legions in there. So without legions and only a single Praetorian guard, ah, boy, man, that is a real, real issue there. And honestly, I, I don't really know how to handle that. So therefore, I, I was once in this situation, which then kind of was so super frustrating that I kind of finished the game. That was my first game. I didn't know how to defeat that war in Italy. It was just a disaster, basically. Maybe today I, I would be a little more, a little less stressed, right? But whatever. Um, okay, um, what do we do? Well, we load this up and uh, hope to see you on the next video or on lonesomegamer.com. Bye.